Okay, this is our third video in the series on the three steps of selling your business. We're gonna talk about step three, which is all about due diligence, funding of any necessary loans, drafting of legal documents, and closing. We get more questions about step three than any other part of selling your business because it's more complex. It involves some of the things that people don't like to talk about like legal documents and due diligence requests. So let's break down each of those components of step three. The first, due diligence. What can you as an owner expect in due diligence? Think of this as a period from 20 days up to a max of about 60 to 70 days after a letter of intent has been, been agreed upon. Here, our prospective buyer, right, or the future owner of the business has the right to ask a lot of detailed questions about the business. And some of this is going to be a little bit painful to you as the owner, right? Because it's not fun to, to feel like you're under the spotlight or getting inspected. Is it normal to provide 12 months of your monthly business bank statements? Yes, this is a standard due diligence request, right? So that, that's a level of the things. Why does a buyer need that? To verify the cash flows and the, defo the deposits coming into the business, right? So there's all sorts of kind of checking right? Checking of the financials and verification of data that was supplied in parts one and two of the process. Funding of any necessary loan. If there's an SBA loan that our buyer is going to use, the timeline for that is anywhere from about 50, 50 up to 70 days, okay, for them to get go through the initial application and the application starts when they have agreed to buy your business. So we're looking at 50 to 70 days after we have agreed on a transaction price and a deal structure with the prospective buyer. The third part of phase three is the drafting of any legal documents. And so here we're gonna pull in uh, a transaction attorney for you as the owner of the business and our buyer's likely gonna have a transaction attorney as well. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna paper, right, or, or, or add legal protection for both sides of the deal, um, the broad deal structure that was outlined in the letter of intent earlier in step two. And then finally on the closing process itself. And so when we think about closing, it's not just the settlement of funds and things like that. Of course, it's receiving money from the lender when, you know, when the loan is funded and it has gone through underwriting and things like that, but that's just one step of it. There could be permits involved, right? And the multiple sales I've had um, this year in, in King County and Washington, every one of those businesses has had a permit of one kind or another. And that's been something that's had to be addressed at closing. Another would be if there's a seller or promissory note, there would be a secondary lien that we would place for your protection on the buyer, right? On the buyer's assets. And so that would be another document. Another thing that comes up in closing would be an employment or, or consulting agreement. So this would be if you're going to stay on and as, as an advisor um, after the sale of the business to the new owner of it, right? So again, the different parts of, of step three are due diligence, funding of any necessary loans, drafting of legal documents, and closing. And this is all, um, this again, this is all part of step three. The first two parts of, the, of selling your business, the first, of course, right, was preparation and valuation. We talked about that in an earlier video. And then they, and step two is marketing and no negotiations. I'm Ryan Hemmert at Washington Business Brokers.